we're on now to the sixth of our pre-season series sessions and this evening I'm joined by Chris Little who these days has got his um, coaching cap on um, at North Hans as their bowling coach but has had very recent experience in the first class game and we're going to be talking this evening about meditation for cricket and a few different perspectives on that about how people can use it for their game but also the wider uh, utility for it so with that in mind Chris as we start off I suppose the first question is how did you come to use meditation because it certainly for a lot of people is something which doesn't appear obvious to them uh, until they've been down the route the road of actually trying it yeah, it was a it was a funny one, really, because I I probably never really looked at doing it in the early days of my my career. I actually look back now and think, you know, I, I'd have benefited from meditating and and taking a bit of time out to think about things and just get your mind in, you know, in focus of what you want to sort of work on or what you're looking to achieve over training, life, whatever. I think I'd have benefited if I'd done that early early on. Um, it actually came about me doing it when I was going through a bit of a bad bad time, really, with with cricket, with with life, um, from the life point of view, uh, my wife was heavily pregnant. We were having um, um, troubles with the pregnancy um, in terms of we having to go to the hospital quite often. Um, and that was when I just joined Gloucester as well. So I've, I've left Sussex, a, a team that I had so many great memories with. Uh, looking back, I wasn't ready to leave. I didn't want to leave um, because I was so happy and settled there. But that's part of sport. You know, you, you move on, you you know, my time was up at Sussex and it was time to go elsewhere. So we moved to, we obviously moved to, to Bristol and I, I signed for Gloucester. Um, and it was, it was a tough time really, because we moved then away from friends, further away from family. My, as I say, my, my wife was pregnant and, you know, she was going through a bit of a tough time with the pregnancy. Um, and then obviously my, my cricket was struggling as well in terms, I hadn't settled that, I can't knock the, the players and support staff at the club. They were fantastic, but it was just a big change for me um, being uprooted, I suppose, from um, Sussex to, to now living in Bristol. So I, I, I suppose I was a bit all over the place in terms of I hadn't settled. I was, there was a lot going on outside of cricket. The cricket wasn't going so well. And I just needed something to help me focus or just, I suppose, help me switch off because um, there was just so much, so much sort of going on. I didn't really... I think I had control over what was happening um, and that, that carried on for quite a while really. Um, my wife um, got ill in pregnancy so she and then she developed sepsis so she had to stay in hospital for quite a while. Um, I had to call um, Doss, Richard Dawson and say listen I, I don't think I'm, I can come back to cricket for a while I need a bit of uh, time out things aren't great at home I've got to look after my wife and now my newborn son um, but thankfully over time that sort of changed, but during all that, I was, I was taking time out to, on an evening or whenever I had a, a moment to actually, you know, it was, a, it was an app that I was using. It was Headspace. I'm sure there's other apps out there that people can use. Um, but for me, this is just one that I started using, but I, I picked that up because there was people in the gloss changing room that were using it. And I could sit, I'd go in there. And I'd see them with the, you know, the earphones in. They'd sat there. They'd be sat there just relaxing, and then they'd go out and train. And I was all, and that got me interested into why they were doing it. Um, and then they told me it helps them, you know, get folk, get focused on what they want to do, calm things down, gives them a bit of, you know, awareness of the body or whatever it might be. It just helps them get ready for the day. And I thought, you know, I could do with that really. I could do with something that could switch me off from what's ever happening at the moment, and just. Um, I don't know, just give me a bit of focus on, on what I was trying to do. But there was other things I, I used it for going down the line. That was preparing for cricket and not just um, so trying to switch off from things. So it was it was really helpful, really helpful in a, in a period of time that was really difficult for me. Yeah, and I, I, I hear what you're saying there about the circumstances of first trying it. My own experience, it's not the, the same set, the same scenario, but it was through almost being forced into trying something different because circumstances were were challenging and like you I often think if I tried it earlier 
the benefits that I've now seen I would have had for longer but obviously you can't do anything about about that as you as you go along when you started off how long did it take you to get into it as a habit or a routine because often it can be that people struggle to make use of it because it is something that's quite different to how we usually behave yeah um at first it took a while to sort of to get into it, it was almost like sometimes I, I got into bed and then I'd be like, oh, I, let's, let's, med- let's put the app on, let's listen to it, let's chill out, let's help me switch off from everything that's gone on so I can get a good night's sleep. So it was a bit like that to start with. Um, going on and I, I carried on using it, carried on you know, uh, using the app for a, a couple of years really. Going into cricket, it was then part of my routine when I got to a ground. When I got to a ground, I'd get in my, my place, I'd sit down, I'd put my earphones in, and then I'd just switch off from everything. Uh, just relax, listen to my app, listen to whatever, whether it was focusing, whether it was um, preparation, what, whatever setting I'd sort of put it on or a uh, bit that I chose. I'd sit there and just have my time for a little bit and get myself ready for what I was about to go and do. And that was part of my cricket routine then when it comes to training or when it comes to playing. Is that's what I do when I got in. I have a ten minutes, not even ten minutes, to myself of just right. And then I'm ready to go and do things. So it came in, but it came um, part of my everyday routine, especially in cricket. Yeah, I know that's got to be key, isn't it? Making it part of a of a routine, so it doesn't seem like it's something so far out of the ordinary. So when you've used it, when you started using it in terms of your preparation for for a game or for, for training. Have, did you ever pick up that there was some benefit from it that would then influence what you did on the, on the pitch itself? Did you draw on any of the techniques in the middle of a game? Definitely, uh, definitely breathing. I thought breathing, um, having control of your breath and slowing your, your, your breathing down, making yourself a bit calmer so you're not sort of, you know, in cricket when either things aren't going too well or you're in the heat of the battle, you can sort of like tense up a little bit, you can get a little bit excited. Um, so being able to be aware of the skills that meditating helps with, actually, I'm just going to take a step back here, a couple of deep breaths, just calm things down. Is my, fo- my focus is then a lot sharper on what I'm trying to do. I'm taking emotion out of things a little bit and being a bit more logical on what I'm trying to do because I've, I've calmed myself down and I think I learned that a lot from doing the meditating is actually just taking a step back calming things down calming the breathing down lower the heart rate a little bit and it helps me focus it's sort of like every time I did it it was like I, I'd sharpened up for whatever I was going to do so even if I did it and it wasn't it, if, if I did it and it was in training the morning of a training day or whatever it helped me have focus for what I was going to do. So I'll be thinking clearer about the day rather than just being a bit muddled or, yeah, just crack on with anything. Let's just get going. I'll be like, actually, that's what I want to get out today because I've spent time to actually get myself ready for the day. Mm. Yeah, it's always important to see how it can then go transfer into action rather than in those moments when you are meditating, there's that peace that surrounds you but it can yeah. quite easily then be the chaos if you if you don't carry on some of those things um, with it. So how did it how how did it interact with other techniques that you would use mentally in cricket? Um, was there a complement with with other things that you utilised? Um, I'm not sure really. I mean, it, how uh, give me sort of an example of what you're trying to. So if, if yeah, if you've got if you've used your meditation as and some breathing exercises, were there any other techniques that you tried to do in terms of maybe your routine or just your preparation that were more around your mind skills? It was visualizing, um, and again, this was in the the gloss change room. It was, it was brilliant to go into that change room and look at what some of the guys did. That they were ahead of what I've seen in other change rooms in terms of the mental well-being and trying to get themselves mentally prepared for what for training for the, for the game for for whatever the, you could see them 
the, the meditate not not everybody um just people because some people needed to uh, some people wanted to some people didn't want to do it. they did they, they didn't feel they needed to and that's absolutely fine but the lads that wanted to do it and needed to do it you could see their routine of they'd meditate they they um do the breathing relax themselves and then they, what they do is have their ipad or the phone they'll be looking at um footage of when they've done really well uh, whether it's going to be against a team that we're about to play, whether it's just in general, uh, whether it's going into a training day and they want to work on certain things, white ball, red ball, they'd look at footage and remind themselves of when things have been really good for them. So they give themselves that real feel good before they go out there and do it, which I thought was really powerful because sometimes, you know, as players, you just get in, drop your bags off, right, boom, let's go again. Let's, let's, get, let's get on with things. And actually, let's take a step back and just make sure you're fully prepared for what you want to do. Otherwise, you can just keep doing the same thing over and over again. And if you are on that cycle where things aren't going well, and you keep doing the same things and you can't get out of it, then you, you can sort of like get yourself in a, a bit of a tricky sit, tricky place, really, where it's take a step back, have a think, relax, refocus, have clarity on your day or whatever you're looking to do, which was I picked up from the gloss change room. It was really, really effective. Yeah, that's good. And I think there's a good a good overlap between, like you've said, the the kind of the approach that meditation can give you, that you are a little bit more distant in some ways, that you're not so reactive, and then visualization can, can go on with that. Um in in your in your I'll move on to the to coaching side of things in a moment, but in your time as a as a player, what role did your your self-talk have so the kind of conversation that you'd be having with yourself either at the end of a mark or between overs or at any point like that um was that something you were you were conscious of or it's only now that you look back that you maybe can view how you had the the conversation with yourself if that makes sense yeah i i was definitely when i i think when things were going really well for me um, especially my time at Sussex and sort of the back end of my time at, at Gloucester. And I, I felt really happy with where my cricket was at and what I was producing. I, I always had a bit of a routine when it got back to my the end of my mark. I'd sort of park anything that had happened after I'd bowled the ball, whether it was good or bad or whatever, I'd, I'd acknowledge it. I'd walk back and as I was about to receive the ball off mid on, mid on, mid on or mid off or anyone close by was throwing the ball back, um, I'd take a deep breath. I'd take a deep breath and confirm to myself what I'm looking to do. And then I'd almost have in my run-up, I'd have a little stamp or something just to trigger it, right, I'm going type thing, just to get my, right, we're off. Let's go and do it. And I'd, I'd be concentrating on what I was trying to um, deliver. Um, that was a little pre-game, uh, pre-ball routine that I had. And I, I think I, I've had it, I pretty much had it through, I think it started early days at Sussex. I picked it up and just had it and kept it going. It, it made sure I was clear on what I wanted to do. On the flip side, when things weren't going too too well, I was rushed. I was like, give me the ball, I'll just ball. I, I, my thinking wasn't clear. I just wanted to either get the over over and done with or just just get it, just fire it down there because I was like, I'll just, I'll fight. I'll, you know, I'll, I'll try my, you know, I'll try and ball my quickest ball or I'll just try something. There was no real clarity in what I was trying to do. I was fight. I wasn't. I wasn't clear. I was just fighting myself. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, so having that routine at the start that calms me a little bit, gives me focus, really helped. Um, again, I didn't. I'd lost that when it wasn't going well because everything else was an issue, or there was always something else going on. That so my focus wasn't on what I was trying to do. It was just always an issue. The wicket's no good. There's no bouncing it or. Do you know what I mean? There's always other things that he's dropped a catch again. That's me. Do you know, there's always other things like that rather than me just focusing on uh, what I want to do, which is when I was at my best, that's what I was doing. Yeah. So it sounds like the optimal state was where there wasn't much chatter in your head. It was just the focus on the routine. Yeah, it, it, stuff that I could control when I wasn't at my best there was stuff that I couldn't control I couldn't I can't control if someone drops a cast I can't control if someone misfields I can't control what the wicket's like or the weather or I'm bowling into the wind why is it always all of a sudden there's there's excuses coming in 
is to be, if I look back and think, you know what, I was a bit, you know, it was a bit rubbish from me, really, thinking, uh, having complaints about all these different things when I wasn't looking internally and being like, <clears throat> actually, you're not bowling well enough. Let's be, let's have a look at why we're not. Let's take a step back. Let's think about things. Stop fighting or picking holes and every other thing. Just concentrate on yourself because it's me that's got to do a job for the team, not, you know, if I'm not doing my job, I'm letting the team down. So having that, that's when, I think that's when I started meditating and started taking time out and using the app, using the Headspace app and just calming myself down. I got a bit, I got a lot more clearer of what I was looking to do and what I needed to do to do my job. And that helped me. So my second year and third year and fourth year um, at Gloucester were way better than my first year because I was clearing what I was wanting to do. Yeah. Now, taking you away from the, the, the game, so part of your reason for starting it was all the things going on at one time and it being hard to, to focus and, and manage things. What benefits has meditation brought in terms of that work-life balance and whether that's as a player or a coach being able to have some some headspace for want of a better term from what you're doing for a job to what you do to react relax and spend time with family and so on yeah i mean it's it's full on it's coaching from what i've you know realized the last year and stuff you sort of never switching off there's always something going on there's always a player that wants a bit of help or wants a bit of advice or wants to chat or there's another coach that wants to speak to you or there's pathway there's always something good which is brilliant i absolutely love it um i am aware that i do need a, a bit of me time um, i do need to be able to to switch off and whether that's me having 10 minutes just on my own and just um uh, switching off controlling my breathing trying to relax a little bit trying to resharpen my mind refocus on what i'm looking to do rather than sometimes i can get involved with everything and all of a sudden i'm here there and everywhere and it's like whoa right take your time sit which is what i learned from um, using the app over the years is, you know, I don't necessarily need an app, but I'm I'm self-aware of when I need to actually just take that time and take a step back. Let, sort of like recalibrate myself, right, this is how I'm going to go about doing this. this right, I'm ready to attack what I, I want to do, um, which has been, you know, I think, I don't know whether meditating is for everybody and some people won't want to do it, but I needed it and I, I'm really happy that I, I did that. I'm really happy that I've learned things that I can control and I'm, I'm more self-aware of me when I need to take a bit of a step back and, you know, um, get control of things a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I think that that is a key, that it, it's not necessarily for everyone, but the outcomes that we've discussed here probably are for everyone it's just their route to being able to develop that that awareness of it moving into coaching then how have you found that meditation and the things that are associated with it have impacted the way you work with players i think it's made me a bit calmer a bit more understanding of, of people um actually trying to understand people a lot more um how they work how they tick whether it's you know, it might need a little bit of nudge sometimes for me to help them. Sometimes I've got to take the foot off the gas and just help them relax and feel comfortable. I think it's because it's helped me sort of understand myself a bit better. I sort of, I'm trying to make sure that I'm understanding the players that I'm working with and not everybody's coached the same way. That's the beauty of coaching. It's, it's finding out the individual and what makes them tick when you see signs maybe that they need to take a step back and be like, you know what, just just relax, don't train today or have a bit of time off or whatever. It's fine. Like I think the hardest thing I did as a as a player was have to tell Richard Dawson I I'm, I can't play. I, I need to take some time off because I'm I, I won't perform to my best. I'm not doing you or the team any favours by me being I need to be with my family. And that's the hardest thing I've ever had to do. But he was very understanding. He said to me, listen, there's, there's more important things in life than cricket. Family's the most important thing. So go and do it. And I took a lot from that, a huge lot from that. So if I could recognise if a player's struggling or having trouble, I'm always there to, to help and support them because that's the main thing. Yeah, of course. Yeah, and particularly at this this time, we were discussing earlier about how the, the training and the coaching is working at the moment a little bit 
different to usual. Of course, people are thinking a long way away from their day job, whether that be cricket or, or anything else. A um, couple of other things here that I wanted to, uh, to, to throw at you. Um, in terms of when you picked it up, you mentioned that this was, a, a, sounds like a pretty um, progressive and um, a curious dressing room at, at Gloucestershire where people are trying things like, like meditation, visualisation, and that seems quite open. How popular would you say from your, your experience meditation is with professional cricket players? I don't think it's very popular at all, if I'm, if I'm being honest. Um, I didn't really see much of it in my time at Sussex. Um, I've not seen a great deal. Whether people do it and they do it at home and they don't do it at the ground, that's, you know, that's, uh, that's, that's fine as well, isn't it? It's a preference of where they do it. Um, I think it's something that, again, that people, you know, you've got to explore these things. You, you, you explore things with training at, all the time in terms of what you do with the bat and ball and on the field or different techniques. This is all part of it. This is all part of getting your uh, mental state fully prepared for either sport, cricket, or life itself. Um, it's part of, you know, people say it's, it's a muscle that needs to be exercised. It's like being in the gym and stuff. So we need to, you need to explore things like that. Sometimes, as cricketers, if things aren't going well, we just keep going cricket. I'll keep training, I'll keep training. Actually, taking the time to get yourself um, mentally ready for whatever you want to do or mentally prepared or being able to just calm things down a little bit is so important. Um, I don't think there's that much of it in, in the county game. I think it'll be uh, a few people or a handful of people that do it. It really opened my eyes when I walked into the, the gloss changing room to see these lads doing it. Chris Dent, massive on it. Benny Howell was massive on it. The, these guys do it all the time. So, you know, they, it was fantastic for me to, to see how they went about it and they did it and how religious they did it, I suppose. Every training session, every every um, uh, match, morning of a match, or uh, I think Chris Dent was every time he went out to bat, he'd, he'd meditate and then he'd have his iPad out in front of them looking at um, footage and stuff. Then he'd go on. And I don't think there's any coincidence that he's, he's scored so many runs over the years because he's, he's just really focused on what he wants to do or what he needs to do and there's there's nothing else sort of clouding his judgment or his mind or anything he's really focused on things so that off my I, I i'd encourage more people to do it but i get that some people won't want to just do it yet they, they might wait for a time what that i had where it was difficult and tough to then look into it which it's not too late but you you know being able to control things earlier on is is, is massive yeah, and, and I think that's that's almost the, the challenge for, for people in, in whatever walk of life who, who have practiced some meditation and have seen the benefit, trying to tread the line between wanting to pass it on to other people because it's been such a benefit, but then not wanting to be a bore about it and always be sort of saying, you should do this, you should do this. It's, it's a tough balance. Um, I'll throw it open now if anyone uh, has any questions any questions just put them in the chat or the the q a but my uh, final one which is which is based along uh this line is if we're we're in agreement here that it be, it's something that's certainly worth trying for, for for players and and indeed anyone um what do you think is the the best route to to ab to advocate it to someone to, to give them that nudge to give it a try um, I don't, I don't know really. I mean, I came about it because I, you know, spoke to the lads and they recommended this app and I tried it and give it a go. And it was, it was free for a week. And I thought, you know what, I'll try it and see what happens in a week. And then a week turned into a month and a month turned into two years. I, I did it for pretty much, not every day, but pretty much every day. I mean, it was sometimes when I, I didn't do it, but I felt really happy in myself. I felt really comfortable and didn't think I needed it. And sometimes when I felt you know, actually, I just need, there's, there's a lot going on. I need to try and, you know, switch off or do something. That's when I was like, I know what to do. I know how to um, do that for myself. I know how to get myself in a, a good headspace by meditating and by taking them that 10 minutes or 20 minutes or doing it a couple of times a day because you've got the time for it. 
that you know that helped me massively. Um, and give it a go. There's no, there's no harm in giving it a go. There's no harm in doing it for a week and seeing how you feel at the end of the week. I think if you don't try things, you'll never know. Simple. Yeah, absolutely. And I think for anyone watching or listening who does practice it, being um, it, having in, in some way some endorsement to your, your teammates at whatever level you're playing can be quite powerful because someone you don't know saying that they use it and it's useful is one thing, but then if it's someone who's in a similar setting to you says it's made a benefit, particularly if that's a, a player or a work colleague or someone who we look at and and see that they perform well, it might be something, there's a little hook that we, we have there. Yeah. Uh, my, my final question is a, is a little bit more... Uh, not technical, but is a bit more involved with the me with the meditation itself, particularly with the the headspace. I'm just this is purely me being curious, Chris, having used the same app myself. Which bit of one of those kind of ten or fifteen minute programs do you find the most? I don't know about enjoyable, but most effective. Is it when it's a focus on your breath? Is it when you may be instructed to just allow thoughts? To come and go or is it something like the the body scan element it was the allow thoughts to come and go because you sort of everything was happening all, all thoughts would come in you'd be thinking and all of a sudden everything would just calm down and you start thinking a bit more clearly about things but i think that involves that you've actually slowed things down you're breathing slower you're you're allowing that yes you're allowing these thoughts to come in but you just get a bit clearer as the as it goes on as the app goes on you come out of it and you think boom there you go. I, I sort of, I know where I need to be. I know my thoughts. I know what I'm looking for. I've focused. I've, you know, I've, I've calmed things down in my head. It's a lot clearer. Um, but it, it's great to explore all of them. It's great to really, you know, just, just let yourself go and let yourself, you know, get involved in it and see where your mind sort of takes you. Or, you know, you learn a lot more about yourself by doing these things. What works for you, what doesn't. I mean, I know I was saying about that, if, you know, if, if I come across a player that might be struggling or he comes up and says a few trigger things like struggling to sleep, I just can't focus, I just, my head's everywhere. My first thing would be to say, listen, have you ever tried, have you ever tried meditating? Have you ever tried just trying to switch off? Have you ever tried just, because a lot of people say, well, you just get, you need something away from it. Go and play golf or go and play. I find golf more stressful than, than cricket. I try to play that and I lose three balls. It's like, so actually just taking spot out of it and just having to recalibrate myself in a way or just, you know, just sharpen things up a little bit or calm things down, I think it's important. But it's, it's looking for them little triggers, isn't it, that people might say that they're struggling with. And I definitely encourage, you know, come on, try the app. Just give it a go. Try an app, try any app or whatever. Just see what works for you. Yeah, that's it. If more people did try it, even if the hit rate isn't 100%, I think we would see then more people trying it, finding that there's something effective and then that's someone else to pass it along and we might have a, a next wave of players and people who are, as a result, more mentally healthy f as a result of that. So, Chris, that's great. It's a pleasure to chat about this kind of thing and, and really refreshing to hear the story about how it came around for you and how it continues to have these benefits. So I'll sign off by saying good luck with the rest of the, the pre-season and uh, hopefully, as we said earlier, fans back in the crowd, in the, in yeah. the grounds for this summer and it's uh, back to normal as much as possible. Absolutely. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure coming on and chatting. Cheers, Chris. Thanks, mate. Cheers. Take care. Bye-bye.